Okay, looking at the the pillow blocks for the bearings on my drive shaft for the drive my on my spine. I was doing two axis up and two axis down, so I had four drive shafts going through. This went crisscross, and these two went crisscross, and you can see that they're spaced so that these holes kind of in weave in between these holes. And uh, so I, right now, I, I cut it down. The, the drive box that's on there right now doesn't have four axis, it has two axis. I left this, these double pairs, and I cut off that. And then I would go two up and two down. But I'm, I wanna build a three axis drive shaft right now. And uh, I'm going to have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these pairs go crisscross. And I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut this off. And then I'm going to have to duplicate. I'm going to take, take these holes and transfer them here and here. And that will give me three shafts on my drive box. To get the additional holes I need in this thing, I, I bolted them crisscross, and I'm going to drill holes right here and right here by transferring these holes over. And the same over here, I'm going to crisscross. And then I'll have the two pieces I need to have the uh, middle drive shaft. Okay, I got these uh, three plates assembled. Got that pivoting. Not happy that it's steel right now, but if I get it working, then I'll replace these steel plate pieces with um, aluminum. I'll make them out of aluminum. Got these two. These are jammed together. This spaces out the proper spacing, and then these are jammed together. And this whole pivot, it can't go back and forth. It's like that on both of them. Okay. Got this together. Got these two pivots, and then it only goes forward and back. And uh, I actually found two sets of springs. If, if you look really closely inside here, there's a smaller diameter spring inside of a larger diameter spring. I just did that to kind of um, increase the pressure a little bit there. Um, if you look at it, I have the smaller diameter strings in the front, and then I have the pairs of strings in the back, uh, springs in the back, and it kind of pushes it forward a little bit. See how it's um, curved forward a little bit? That'll be kind of uh, in the direction that the robot will stand. This is the back, and this is the front. And uh, this will go right on top of the drive box, and then the, uh, the Z-axis motor box will go on top of this. Or in front of it. That looks good. All right. You can see I have my pillar blocks for my three axes axes on my three axis spine. I got my two axis portion down here at the bottom, the bottom five segments. This is in the, almost the middle, a little bit lower than the middle. This point right here represents the bottom of the rib cage. It's kind of like the sixth from the pelvis. Pelvis attaches to this. One, two, three. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a, represents the sixth segment. And of course, you know, segments six, seven, eight, and nine or whatever um, are right here. There's no ribs on it. There's no segment there, but that's where the... That's where it would be on the body if it was on a real body. And then this is, these two segments here are going to be driven by the topmost drive shaft. That's going to come out of this, this pillow block here. And that's just a single axis. That doesn't have a ball pivot like these have a ball pivot. This just has like, um, they're just hinges. You can kind of see in there a little bit. And that only moves forward and back. That doesn't go side to side, and it doesn't twist either. Like, uh, I have my left and right back and forth. 
on this, but then there's it's compliant in the twisting access like that because it's on a ball. It's not on a journal.